So fun is over, the science light tree is on. <laughs> I hope it's not gonna be like this. So I'm Beppe Battaglia, and I'm clear from my name and my accent, I'm a local, right? <laughs> I, I lived here though for 10 years and I feel like one, so I love this city in many ways. So I'm um, based in the biology department, although I'm no biologist. And uh, I'm gonna show you a little um, travel around this uh, 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 concept of multidisciplinarities, starting from a very boring concept, which is the concept of uh, pharmacy. So I started as a chemeng in my life in, as a scientist, and then I was working there in food encapsulation, how to generate better Cokes and oil and, and other type of pop drinks. And then I moved into more science part, into uh, chemistry and physics, completely losing myself into numbers and equations. And then eventually, in the last six, seven years, I started to talk more and more with biologists to a point that now I have 80% of my group made out of biologists. And the reason I'm interested about that is that one of the biggest challenges in medicine is how to encapsulate your drug and deliver it to the right side. If you look, for example, at the typical formulation of a tablet like paracetamol that you're probably familiar with, you found out that actually the drug itself makes probably 5% of the tablet. The rest is made by a lot of other things which are called excipient. And these things are there for a specific reason, for preserving the drugs, looking at transportation, so encapsulation. And of course, once you take your tablet, and then also this excipient allow the drug to go and then be released in the right point. This science though is very old, and these drugs that you see have uh, tens of years of, uh, uh, were, were developed probably 40 years ago. And the reason that it takes so long to go from a discovery to actual application is because you've got to go through a lot of clinical testing, et cetera, and safety. So, of course, science has evolved meanwhile, and so hopefully what I'm going to show you is something that in 15 years' time will be also a drug. And my inspiration comes from actually sci-fi. <laughs> because uh, we as scientists don't really have many ideas. The writers have more than us, and in 66, <laughs> These guys, in, uh, including Asimov, came up with this beautiful movie called Fantastic Voyage, where basically for scientists were shrunk down to save a colleagues and injected in, their blo in the bloodstream of their colleagues and they went through a submarine into the bloodstream and fight many enemies there and eventually get rid of the, uh, the brain clot and save the life of their colleagues. Can we actually do this today? This is the answer I'm gonna try to give you. Let's start with a little bit on numbers. And of course, the first thing is defining the measurements. The very first things we use for measuring things that small is the nanometers. And the nanometer is very much, one nanometer comprises 10 water molecules, so it's pretty small. And then one nanometer stays to a meter, the same as a football stays to the earth. So it's that small, and I hope this brings it to in perspective things. And of course, can we actually operate at that level? It's kind of very simple to see that in the medicine, when a surgeon operates, it can go very, very small, and that's why surgeons take so long to be trained as a surgeon. And nowadays, you're probably familiar with microsurgery using lasers, and this is also an advancement in technology. But what you probably don't know is that in physics and chemistry, now we have the ability to manipulate objects at much smaller levels. Single proteins, single pieces of DNA, or even single molecules, because we have the tools to do so. And more importantly, we understood the physics and the, and, the, and, the, and the actual rules of doing so. So, are we ready to do this sort of evolutional step to transform our little pill into something a little bit more sophisticated that can interact in our body in the same way as those scientists in a fantastic voyage were able to? And of course, it requires new chemistry, new physics, new material science. It also requires very much understanding the biology and the medicine of that. So, in a fantastic voyage, these guys were injecting in the body and they were able to move in the, in the brain of their colleagues and, of course, operate in the same way as a macroscopic world would do. Unfortunately, this is wrong. Physically, this is impossible because if you shrink things down, the, the things around you become bigger and bigger, right? So going in water and swimming into water just without the proteins or the tissues and the cells is very much as if you go into a ball pit. <laughs> It's the subtly same difficulties of moving in the ball pits because the water molecule becomes bigger and bigger. So everything just hits you very hard. And while you don't feel the water, you will feel those pits. Um, so how can we sort this problem out? And this is where, again, we go back to biologists and biologists have the answers. Because our body is already equipped 
to have those type of vectors, to type those tools to move things around from A to B. And this can be as sophisticated as the whole cells, like the red blood cell carry oxygen in our body very effectively. Or like the immune cells that basically guard our infection propensities by going from tissue to tissue, jumping from one to the other very effectively. And then in less complex systems where you have a little sac called microvessel that can carry proteins, DNA, et cetera, all of these nutrients critical for our usage, for our life. And of course, there are also the pathogens, the ex external body, like bacteria, viruses. They can be good, they can be bad. Most of them are bad, I'm afraid. <laughs> but they also have the same ability. They can enter our body and go through the different parts and deliver and interact with that very effectively. And this is exactly what we've been trying to do here at Sheffield. We've been trying to, using something which is very old, which is basically lazy science, instead of making a new idea, you go up there and take inspiration from that. And this is very much what inspired the invention of the airplane, et cetera. But of course, because you make it synthetically or you make it artificially, you can improve. There is no way you can pack hundreds of people on that bird, but you can definitely do that into the airplane. So can we do the same with at the small scales? Can you actually pack up a better amount of drugs or any good things that you want into those small objects? And that requires quite a lot of chemistry and physics, believe me, and a lot of maths as well in on the side. And we are now have a lot of object, or nano object, if you like, where we can do that. We can pack up many, ob many good things into those. We can have the surface, the, the morphology, the shape, adapted to the particular function so that basically we can address challenges and this is where we work close with our colleagues in the, in the, in the hospital, where you want to address challenges like cancer, Alzheimer, Parkinson, or even going into vaccine, better vaccination. Why can we be vaccinated against any infection? And the reason is because we don't have a good way to deliver the vaccine in the right place. Or even cure infection which are not curable, etc. Let me finish off with a nice movie, which will show you one single application we've been working with colleagues in the neurology department. I am not responsible for the choice of the woman that is going to be injected there, so don't hold me, no, because I'm Italian, I like beautiful girls. Uh, <laughs> so let's pretend that you are in the neurology department in the future sometime, and you have this formulation and is able to do that. The challenge here is to deliver drugs that can enter our central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord. And this is a difficult task, because this is one of the parts of our body which is highly guarded. So what the first things you gotta do is having those objects able to stay in the blow long enough. So they again can be pumping in the, in the heart and then the heart itself can then pump it out all the way up to the brain vessels. And then once you are there, the brain vessel already are equipped with a series of biological molecules that to decide what is good and what is bad for the brain. And what if we can target those so that the same cells, the guard, the, the gates of the brain can actually allow the good things to go in. And therefore, our little vector, our little better packages, if you like, can go across these cellular processes. And this is where we deal a lot with cellular biology and try to understand those at the, on the same time. And then the same packages is then pack up in another top of natural one and then deliver on the other side of the barriers so that basically you can reach the brain effectively and do the good things that you can do with the brain. And I hope I haven't bored you too much with all of these scientific details, and sometimes uh, I do bore myself with those, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.